My father was a World War II veteran. He, he was flying missions against uh, hardened targets, um, German ships. So out of 10,000 people who started, 100 made it. So when he came back, he was not necessarily in the best condition. He was an interesting individual to grow up with. Uh, and then when I was a surgical and a seizure resident, I spent four years in the VA, Westside VA. So I had a lot of exposure to veterans. So the conventional therapeutics for PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder, is pharmaceutical, various drugs, and then psychotherapy. The problem with pharmaceuticals, pretty much all of them are ineffective. And a number of them have a lot of side effects. And it takes a long time to work, even if they do work. You're looking at at least two months, maybe six months to work. And then psychotherapy takes a while. So this procedure works in 30 minutes to an hour, which is really quick, obviously. So there is an advantage, especially for male veterans. Men are usually don't like to sit around and wait for things to work. They like to have things happen. And the service that he provides changes lives. It changes lives not just of the veteran, of the families that are with the veterans, the children, the wives, the parents, etc. Basically, what this does is it seems to do the following. It seems to help sleep significantly. It reduces reactivity, which is like one of the veterans described it. It's like I used to go zero to 60 in about a microsecond, like this. And it doesn't work very well, especially in relationships with this gentleman. Uh, so after the block, it's much more calm, relaxed to go from zero to two. And a lot of the special ops guys who had this procedure through uh, Dr. Mulvaney and other, his associates, they described them being very calm. So I did a lot of the normal treatments with my doctors, pills and therapy and things like that, you know, trying to talk through it and through medication. And, you know, that stuff is, you know, hit and miss, you know, a lot. And it works great for some people and doesn't work for others. And I've done, you know, I exhausted all the normal procedures. My least favorite drug that's used currently is Seroquel. And that makes people gain weight, make them impotent, make them groggy and sleepy. I started realizing that you know, if I wanted a relationship with somebody else, if I wanted, you know, a relationship with my son and whatnot, that I had to fix this problem that I have. And and uh, my mother uh, saw this program on uh, Dr. Phil, and she really, you know, convinced me to go through with it. Well, Hollis was never one to hide his feelings, so we had a pretty good baseline on what made him mad and what made him sad, and he never was afraid to tell you what he was feeling. So when he came back, we saw a big difference. Uh, one of the main things was that his uh, emotions were more or less on a step function. Uh, there was no such thing as a little bit sad or a little bit mad or a little bit anything. He was either not or he was full on. Well, now you're back with your family, away from your military friends and things like that. And that's when the problem started to, to develop and that I, I noticed that I wasn't as happy as, as I was, as I once was. It's the typical of just being short with people that, I guess you say, that aren't like you, you know. It's, you, you know, you don't understand where I'm coming from, you don't understand where I've been, you don't understand my point of view type of things or how I see the world. His emotions are just on a hair trigger and, and if that could get calmed down, then I think he could think his way through the rest of it. And when I hear what they're saying, I hear their pain and their hesitation and their doubts, but they're also at the same time, they're sharing their, their hopefulness in it, but they're almost sheepish to be hopeful. And then after the treatment, you see how fast it impacted them. And, and it's just a very emotional for them, obviously. Uh, they, just, they just can't believe that, you know, they feel this different. And it's great, you know, it's a, it's a position that I, I take a lot of pride in. I, I, it makes me happy that these guys are, I wish that we could do everybody at one time. I was reluctant at first, you know, I don't need any help, I don't want to do this, you know, it's in my head, I can solve it, it's my problem, but, you know, eventually, you know, as the months went on, I realized that, you know, I just wasn't happy anymore. You know, my hopes for this are that, that uh, I can move on with my life and, and, and do something else and be something else, but, you know, with this roadblock is the PTSD and the anger and the sadness and inability to deal with everyday issues is what holds you back. 
it's been almost seven years for me now and it's taken me that long just to acknowledge that that is possible but yet with my PTSD and the you know emotional problems that I have now I can't do anything about that and I'm hoping this program and this treatment will get me to a state where I can love myself again. I was introduced to Dr. Lipoff with the Global Post Traumatic Stress Injury Foundation and we developed a relationship. He had asked me to come on board. I accepted the position as the Midwest Regional Director and the whole point of it is, is, is his mission is something I could believe in. I understood what it could do for the veterans and those that are suffering from global or from post-traumatic stress and he treats it differently. He treats it as a biological uh, situation within the body rather than a psychological and that's not to say there's not psychological issues to be addressed. It just there's a process within the body that takes place when you pass certain thresholds. I understood what he was saying and I, and I wanted to try it uh, so I could better understand it before I would truly accept the position. I've personally treated about 264 patients, I think, uh, with stellates, which is about 600 stellates, give or take. And then uh, they came from about 42 states and three countries. Far, farthest away was New Zealand. In order to understand that, you need to understand what sympathetic system is fight and flight. When you're running away from the tiger, the sympathetic system is kicked into gear. So when you have a sympathetic system being overly active on a continuous basis, then think of jumping in front of the car and jumping back and you're always hyped up. If it stays like that, that's what PTSD is. There's too much norepinephrine or adrenaline in your brain, basically. What happens is when you have is severe stress, like military stress, let's say. It seems to grow new sympathetic fibers in the brain that continues to pump out adrenaline. And that's what makes you revved up. That's why you can't sleep and you go from zero to 60 in a microsecond. So when you put a local anesthetic injection in the neck, it seems to turn off the extra nerve growth in the brain and goes back to the baseline. And that's why people stay calm and collect, and it can last for a long time. Local anesthetic itself lasts eight hours, while the effect of this block can last either for a month or years, which is great. So basically the way the block is done, the patient's lying on their back, we use x-ray guidance to make sure it's safe in the right spot. The needle goes right side above the clavicle or the bone here, and uh, the nerves are in the neck. It's basically a sympathetic ganglia, which is a bunch of nerves together, and those nerves go then from here up into the arteries and go up to the brain. So we use x-ray to make sure it's the right spot, then put some dye in, make sure the medicine is going to follow the right path, and put the injection in, which numbs up the nerves. Immediately after I was treated and I was uh, back on my feet, I, I felt completely different. I literally didn't feel, again, like somebody was sitting on my chest. I felt like a big weight was taken off of me. I was very clear-headed. I was I had a sense of calm about me that I hadn't felt in a long time. And it just became abundantly clear to me that I was actually impacted from stuff over there. Uh, friends and family members that did not know that I went through this treatment would make unsolicited comments to me. You know, you seem happier, you seem more calm, uh, it's much easier to be around you, uh, all those kinds of things. And that to me was kind of a litmus test of how much of an impact this really had for the good. And I just, I can't encourage people enough to come in and trust us and work with us and give us a chance to give you a chance. You know, the before and afters of this are, are tremendously different. You know, the many years leading up to this, I was, you know, constantly worrying about stuff. And then, you know, you would get help with, you know, anxiety and stuff. And, but then you would worry about not worrying. And then you end up giving yourself a panic attack again. And I can definitely already feel now that it's not like that. The best way I can describe the difference between the feelings of now and then, it's, uh, I mean, if you had uh, a a motion picture, you know, a movie that you're watching and, you know, one version is in black and white, you know, it's the same movie, same things go on and the same, you know, you get the same message across, but then all of a sudden halfway through the movie, it's, it's now in color, you know, and it just adds something to it. It adds a range of, you know, things that are going on and that's kind of how it feels, you know, it's, you know, it's it's still my life, it's still my emotions, it's still what I'm doing, but it, it's, it's just, there's just more of it and it's richer, I guess.
Well, after he came in after the procedure, I, I was uh, very excited and uh, pleased to see that, that he mentioned how much calmer he was and he wasn't anxious about what was going to happen uh, this afternoon or tomorrow. He was just ready to take things as they came. So that, that, was, a, that was a very exciting change. So once they go through this treatment and they feel like they're back to what I call re-baseline to what they were before that incident, whatever it may have been, whether it's ongoing combat or a single incident, doesn't matter. Once the body passes that threshold, it has happened to them, so then they're dealing with it. To see them go through this treatment and then get back on their feet and feel so relieved, and I feel good because I know they're going back to their families and they, they basically they have or they've re-baselined the, their life. They have a good chance. Should everybody in, in the globe get a stellar ganglion block. I would say, do, no, I don't think everybody in the globe does not need this. That's why we do PCLs. So if people have very low PCL, I usually wouldn't do it because a couple of reasons. One, it's not worth going through it. Number two, it's unlikely it's gonna change anything for you. So why go through a procedure? The mission of GPTSIF is to optimize therapeutic for PTSD and be able to bring it to everybody who needs it and the best quality providing. That's basically as simple as that. As far as uh, recommending this to another veteran or, or anybody that has a, you know, PTSD or something like that, I mean, it's, it's in, worth it and words you can't describe. I mean, it's, I, right now I feel great and I feel calm and at ease and comfortable and this would be great for anybody that's suffering from something like this.